Good morning, everybody. It's good to see you all here. And so before we pray, I uh, just want to make a couple announcements. Pastor Tom is in the ER today. Uh, he went in the ER last night. He had a mini stroke. And uh, he's stable. You know, they did uh, a CAT scan. They couldn't find a blood clot in the brain. But uh, they did say it was, they did confirm it was a mini stroke. Um, he probably will sh probably should be going home today, so we just want to keep Barb and Tom in prayers. And we have uh, some other people we want to keep in prayer, too. Uh, we want to continue to pray for Jan as she battles uh, a cancer, and her daughter Jenny. Uh, she's been battling a brain tumor, so it is shrinking, but we want to continue that family in prayer. John Lake. John is actually going to get his part of his leg removed on Tuesday at St. Mary's. The infection... Uh, has went into the bone. They do need to remove part of the leg. So John and Linda, St. Mary's, uh, he will be at Grand Village this coming weekend. So if you want to stop up and visit John, I'm sure he would appreciate it. Also, Cliff Talgard is up there. He'll be there till Wednesday. If you, I know some of you went and visited Cliff, but keep, keep Cliff and uh, Dorothy in your prayers. And Dorothy is here today, and she just wanted to tell you all thanks for the prayers and people that have went and visited Cliff. So we continue to pray for those people. Danny Whitstruck is also in the ER. We want to remember him. And also we know that, obviously, the hurricane. We have loved ones, we have friends, and we have, you know, brothers and sisters in Christ. You know, Yankee, Yankees Church, personally, one of, a dear friend of uh, mine and most of yours, if you know Yankee, his church is in the direct path. They're in Tampa, Clearwater area. So we want to remember him and his congregation. Yankee is up in Georgia right now. I did talk to him, but let's remember them in prayer uh, as all Floridians. And also, we have uh, the Heinz boys travel traveling. You know, Dennis and Aaron. Uh, I don't know if Sean went with, but they're going to Colorado. We want to remember them in prayer. And um, just our kids. Our kids start school. Started school last week. We want to remember our kids and grandkids in prayer. And, and just like the song says, you know, it is a war out there. We do fight, fight against uh, the principalities of this world. We don't fight against flesh and blood. It is a war. We need to, you know, one of the best offensive defense is the word of God, but we need to pray, pray for our kids, pray for protection. Uh, with all that said, is there any other prayer requests this morning? Mr. Bush. Angel. <clears throat> Mom and Dad. Yes, Barb. Let's open with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Father, first of all, we just want to just want to give thanks. We're so we just you know we offer up thanksgivings of prayer, and we just boldly come to the throne of grace, and we just want to say thank you. We just want to thank you for Jesus Christ, our Lord, Savior, who revealed Himself in the flesh, went to the cross, and He became a curse for all of us. He took all of our sin, dying for all of our sin. He was buried, and then He resurrected the third day, showing us, Father, that You accepted Christ. Jesus' perfect sacrifice for sin. And we know Jesus sits at the right hand of you today, Father, and we're just so thankful for this amazing gift that we receive. And we receive it all by faith. We don't have to make any promises. We don't have to do anything. We don't have to get to the front of the church. We don't have to get water baptized. We don't have to do good works. None of that will save us. It's simply trusting in the gospel. We believe that Jesus Christ died for our sins and he resurrected for us. We're trusting in him and him alone for salvation. And we are just so grateful to know that we have eternal life, that we can never lose it, and we're forever secure in your hands, Father. 
And Father, as we gather here today, we pray for other people's salvation. We know that there are many people around the world that are trying to earn, you know, it is, uh, using a merit system. They're trying to earn salvation by doing this or doing that. And we know that the, the scriptures are very clear. They could never earn it. But we pray for these people that they would understand they're a sinner. They violated God's holy law. And it is a blood payment. And ultimately, Christ's death payment can be put to their account all by faith. So we pray that you would reveal it to these individuals that ultimately they would understand they're a sinner and they need a Savior, and his name is Jesus. And we pray for these people, and they're on the list, and we just pray that you would open their eyes, Father, that you'd open their ears, and they would, the, uh, they would see the grace and mercy and love in your message. And Father, we pray for some individuals that are going through medical. We first start with, you know, John Lake. Surgeries this week. John, we just pray a wonderful man in Christ. We just pray, Father, that you would ultimately deliver, that you would guide those surgical instruments and that you would guide, you know, uh, John through surgery there and the surgery would be successful. And Father, we pray for his quick healing and recovery. We know with his diabetes that the recovery is going to be, could be complicated, but we know that you've got your watchful eye over him and we just pray for your healing there, Father, and that you'd bring him to Grand Village and that he would be healed and ultimately to get this infection out of his body and he can get his life back on task. <coughs> And Father, we pray for Pastor Tom as he's in ER this morning, that you'd be with him and that you'd heal him, Father, and be with Barb, give her some peace this morning. We pray that you continue to be with Jan and Jenny and Doug and grant them sufficient grace each day, give them strength, give them comfort, and give them assurance. And Father, we just pray that people would, you know, reach out and continue to text and email and call people and sometimes even visit. And Father, we pray for uh, faith young lady in Christ. Uh, she, she had an incident and sounds like she might need another procedure this week. We just, Father, we just pray that you'd be with the, the Bush family and you would address, you know, faith's medical needs and just uh, give assurance to the family, especially dad, that things, that his wonderful daughter is going to be just fine. We pray for the Knox family for medical for, I'm sorry, the little boy Knox, a uh, friend of Angela's, that, that you would address his medical needs, their father, and Hannah young girl who had broken her arms, both arms, midsummer, continues to have the cast, continues to, you know, struggle. We just, Father, we just pray that you would remove the cast this week, and we just pray that uh, she'd have proper healing and, and uh, that the, the young lady could get her life back on track. And, Father, we pray for the Heinz boys traveling. We just pray for them that you would keep guide them and bring them back safely. We also pray for the victims down in Florida, all the Floridians. We just pray that you know, Father, they're safe, secure, that people would be smart. And, well, Father, we just pray that you, you'd especially take care of our loved ones and our friends, be with Yankee and uh, his family and his flock. And so, Father, we just pray for protection for all the people down there. And we just pray that uh, maybe you could even guide it off even further west there, Father, that it could die out into the Gulf of Mexico. So, Father, we just pray. We have so many prayer requests this morning. You know, you know the needs and the wants, but... Father, we, this body that's represented here this morning, we pray that this body could be blessed this morning through the singing and through the reading of the word. And we pray all this, all this in Jesus' name. Amen. I just want to thank everybody for the prayers for my mom, Mary. Um, she's doing really well with the infusions, and she's got a couple more to do, and then we're going to do a CAT scan and see where she's at. So thank you all for that. And I want to welcome two young men to church. Um, one of them used to ride my bus. I'm not going to point them out, but one of them has some family issues, so please pray for them too. Thank you. Okay, so whose birthdays are we celebrating this weekend? Don't be shy. <laughs> we got Hunter. Hunter had a birthday. Okay. Huh? All right. So we have someone in the back row who's hiding a secret. So, okay, the hands are held high now, Hunter. <laughs> he does not like to be called out. <laughs> <laughs> Any other liars? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we'll sing happy birthday to Hunter. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. God bless you. Happy birthday to you. All right, excellent. Happy birthday, Hunter. All right, any anniversaries? 
None? All right. Who? A week from today? Well, yeah, we got to hold out. You haven't made it there yet. Congratulations. Oh, you're not going to be here? No. Oh, then we'll have to sing it now. Okay. All right. How many years, Ed? Oh. Oh, did you hear that? Okay, wait, wait. Let's bring Kelly. How many years? 24. Eddie. Oh, he is, he is digging back, trying to dig out how many years. See, my wife, my wife inscribed our anniversary date inside my ring, so I always got a cheat sheet. Congratulations. <laughs> so all you, anyone who's young and think about getting married, make sure you have your wife put your anniversary date inside your ring. But then if you forget, you really have no excuse. Watch out. All right, so let's sing. Happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary, celebrating merrily our happy anniversary, celebrating merrily, happy anniversary, and God bless you. Awesome. All right. So we'll move on to, uh, we're going to do It Is No Secret. We're going to do all the verses. It's song 581. This is the handout. It was in the back of the church. Come as you are. You know, I talked about the song last time we did it, a few months back. And the thing that's, the words of this song, come as you are, because that's how our Father accepts us once we accept Christ as our Savior. We're always, no matter how hard we try, we're still going to be sinners. We're still going to fall. Uh, and Christ paid for all, every one of those sins, as Lance always says, past, present, and future. But it's awesome that through Christ and through his blood, we have a Father that we can always turn to who will never let us down when this world will let us down. And, you know, it, 
to actually, he's not just a God. He is our Father. And you can tell him you love your Father, Abba Father. And that's why I feel sad when people don't understand what Christ did for them. They have not accepted what the gift of salvation through Christ. They do not have that personal relationship with their Father in Heaven who accepts us as we are, just as we accept our kids. For all, regardless of their failings as well, they're always our kids. So anyhow, that's, the words of the song are very, very powerful to remember because we are going to fall, but our Father will never let us go. Come out of sadness forever you've been Come broken hearted and the rescue begin Come find your mercy, O sinner, come kneel Earth has no sorrow that heaven can heal Earth has no sorrow your burdens and lay down your shame all who are broken lift up your face oh wanderer come home cause you're not too far lay down your hurt Quick announcements. Again, I just want to, Dorothy wanted me to give thanks, and I just want to thank you all who faithfully support 
you know, in the furtherance of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have many individuals who mail checks. You know, we've been get, receiving checks in the mail. You know, we don't get up here and preach money at all. You know, but it does take some money to keep the lights on. But, you know, we, we support ministry in the Philippines. We've been sending heaven tracks to Kenya, Uganda, uh, Nigeria. Uh, we actually have made a contact in North Korea. We sent uh, 500 heaven tracks and, you know, probably 50 Bibles to them. And uh, they're asking for at least another 1,000 more heaven tracks this week. So... I mean, the gospel is getting around the world. And you know what? God is using you, this church. So, you know, that money is not going into somebody's pocket. That money is buying, you know, resources. It's helping kids, you know, to go to youth groups. It's running camps. But it all comes down to the gospel of Jesus Christ. So people can understand. People can hear Jesus Christ as their Savior. Nothing greater than that. And I just want to thank you all for... Understanding, you know, the Lord has given you the money, the resources, so you then can help support. And I just want to thank you all for wanting to support a gospel-driven ministry. And I just uh, really appreciate that. I'm blessed to be part of a family that sees that, understands that. Also, um, you can, on the right hand, you'll see what some of the events coming up. We will be shutting camp down today. If your name's not on a list, you're more than welcome to come out and still help. We probably have, uh, you know, we got probably enough for six to eight people to keep busy for a couple hours. We also have the BSU football game coming up. We definitely want kids to probably pre-sign up for that. We don't know if we're definitely going to need one bus, but I don't know if we're going to need two buses. So put the word out. Go to Lord's Army Facebook page have pre-kids, kids actually signing up on the Lord's Army there, and we know Ron's on top of it. Ron will be actually keeping a tally list. And then my son's wedding, him and Kaylee next summer. Is there any other announcements? Yes, Gwen. Gwen, I remember, sorry. Uh, apples. She has apples. They have an orchard. And if you want apples, she asks that you would meet them at their vehicle, and they will give you the apples. So... They have many apples, and they were very gracious to bring them, pick them, have them ready, and there's nothing better than their apples. But uh, you know what? Please go to their vehicle so they don't have to carry them. So, Gwen, would you please stand up so everybody knows who you are? There you go. <laughs> there she is. So you can go see her for apples. Chad. What time do you guys uh, We're probably going to meet up there around 1. That'd be good. So if you can make it, and if not, understand. So uh, that's it. We'll sing our last song. Can we get all the kids up here for Jesus Loves Me? That would be great. Who's going to be on the ranch? Do the first you? One, the first one twice. Okay. Uh, it's on page 226. We'll do verse one twice. <laughs>
can take this out of your hand. So you get your Bibles out, turn to Matthew 24. You know, last week we started Matthew 24, and the message we named it as Revelations 1-7. Jesus Christ is coming again, part two. You know, uh, so last week was part one, Matthew 24. We know it's the Olivet Discourse. It is talking, speaking of prophecy. And, you know, so many people use it for the rapture. And... Uh, but you know what? We need to be real clear. The, you know, the Olivet Discourse is speaking to the Jews, the nation Israel. And we're going to look at that. It is the 70th week of Daniel. We know between the 6th, 69th week of Daniel and the 70th week of Daniel, it is the age of grace. And there's no way the Lord would allow his bride to go through the tribulation. It is a pre-trib. And let me grab something so you'll see. We had handouts in the back, little index cards that we actually uh, got from Bianchi. So if you didn't get one, you could go in the back. Probably, you probably still have one. If not, uh, you can always come up after uh, church and I can get you one. I know Mr. Bush and Mr. Geeler, Herman and uh, Mr. Bush, Victor, hand out these. They use them at the, the jail. You know, prophecy is always very interesting. The rapture is interesting to talk about. The tribulation is always interesting to talk about. And ultimately, where are we? What are, what's the Olivet Discourse? Right here, 70th week of Daniel. So we were in it. Let me review a little bit here, and then we'll get back into it. But Daniel was given a vision, 70 weeks. We're talking Daniel chapter 9. The Medo-Persians came into the empire at that time. The Babylonians were overruled. God promised 70 years the Babylonians would come into power, and ultimately, but they, when they would be overruled. They came into power at 605 B.C., the Medo-Persians came into power at, at 535. So it is very important, and Daniel was reflecting on that. It was his first couple years of the Medo-Persians, and he's reflecting how the God always delivers on his promise. God delivered on the 70-year promise that, Babylon, that Jerusalem, Israel, would be under captivity, under Babylonian rule for only 70 years, and to the day Israel was delivered. They were under Medo-Persian, but ultimately we know under the Medo-Persian, Ezra was allowed back to go back and build the temple. Nehemiah was allowed to go back and build the wall and build the city back up. So Daniel was given a vision in 70 weeks. <laughs> Later on in Daniel chapter 9, <clears throat> we know that each week represents a year, or ultimately uh, seven years. So it's 400 and actually represents 490 years. He hears there's a plan. So he's at the end of the Babylonian captivity, start of the Medo-Persian, 535. He gets this vision of Daniel 924 to make an end of sin, a reconciliation, an everlasting righteousness. They were looking for the Messiah. But you know, in the Old Testament, they couldn't separate the persecution and the glorification. They often mixed the two events of the first advent Second Advent. So there is some time in between here. And ultimately, all of the discourse talks a little bit about that time in between there. But we read here, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression, to make an end of sin, to make reconciliation for the iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up the vision and prophecy, to anoint the most holy, holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem under the Messiah, the prince, shall be seven weeks, 49 years, three score, two weeks, We're talking 62 weeks, a total of 69 weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall and even in troublous times. So during Daniel's time, we know the temple was destroyed. Babylon has destroyed it. 
He's telling us it's going to be rebuilt. So when, when Jesus Christ is talking in, in Olivet Discourse here in Matthew 24, the temple is there. We have prophecy fulfilled. If we go on to 26, and after three score two weeks, shall the Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. He didn't die for himself. We see in Daniel chapter 9, 535 B.C., prophesying when the Messiah is going to die. He didn't die for himself. He died for us. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with the flood, and unto the end of the war desolation he determined. And then we have right here, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. The 70th week of Daniel, right here. Seven years, the one week. The Antichrist. And in the midst of the week, the great tribulation. So he has a treaty. He sets it up for the nation Israel, but he violates that. What does he do there? And he says, and in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of the abomination, he shall make it desolate. Matthew 24 talks about the abomination of desolation. We're going to read in Revelation today what that is. It's, it is the beast system. It is Satan desiring worship and the world actually invites him and does worship him for 42 months. Prophesied in 535 B.C. Tell me it's not the word of God. Tell me this stuff is not true. Even until the consummation and the determined shall be poured upon the desolate. So after Jerusalem is rebuilt, 49 years, another 62 weeks, 435, 434 years, a total of 483 years, the Messiah will be cut off. Sins and ultimately a rec reconciliation for iniquity. How great is that? Matthew 24, Jesus Christ sitting there days before the crucifixion. The 483 years have come to an end. Time to make an end for sin. Time to make an everlasting righteousness. And there's nothing cooler than Jesus Christ and there's nothing cooler than this Bible because it is amazing how great it all comes together. And if you're sitting there today and you don't know what the gospel is, look at 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. This is the gospel. It is the everlasting gospel, as Revelation 14. It also tells us in 2 Thessalonians 1, if you reject the gospel, you obey not the gospel, you go to hell. It tells us, moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which you have received, and wherein you stand, by which also you're saved. That's not man's word. These are God-breathed words, the infallible word of God. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain, for I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That is the gospel. Nothing better than that. And ultimately we know There's only one gospel. Galatians 1, verse 6 and 7 tells us that. Man can't clean himself up. There's no way, there's nothing that we could do to offer. Matter of fact, Isaiah says the best we could offer is a filthy rag. We know that John 3.16 is a great, great verse, and we'll look at that. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believes, doesn't say baptize, ask Jesus in their heart, doesn't say that. It says whoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. Now Satan will want you to think that Jesus Christ comes to condemn us. No, we're already condemned. But that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. If you've not seen this, I ask that you look up here. Let this hand here represent you and I. This wallet here represents your sin. God loves us, man. Loves us. There's nothing better. Like Brian said, come as you are. He did, you don't need to make any promises or any commitments or walk to the front. You know, come as you are. Loves each and every one of you so much. In a world that is very shallow, very... Uh, you know, the motivations are unclear when people hide behind transparency where their motives are very unclear and 
You're very sketchy of why these people are trying to befriend you. The motive of Jesus Christ is very clear. The record is very clear. He's already done it. He loves you so much, so much, that he actually became the Lamb of God. He turned that cross on an altar and he became a sacrifice himself. Not just a man or a martyr hanging on that cross. It is God himself revealed himself in the flesh and he died a perfect sacrifice paying for all sin of mankind buried under the world showing a testimony that he paid for sin because you know without the shedding of blood tells us in Hebrews there is no forgiveness of sin. And then three days later he triumphantly Resurrected from the grave, victory over death, victory over sin, victory over Satan. And he says, you can have this if you just believe what I have done for you. You receive his everlasting righteousness, his death and resurrection put to your, your account, and you're as seen as alive as Jesus Christ is today. And when you can conquer death, you have eternal life. You receive that in him. Prophesize. We know back in Genesis 3.15, Adam and Eve were prophesied of Christ. But here again, just Christ is on every page in the scriptures. What a beautiful thing. You know, if you're sitting here today and you've not accepted Christ as your Savior, I ask the question, why not? What's stopping you? Why not, when you hear the love message, how much Jesus Christ loved you, why not receive him? Why not believe? I don't know. I would hope that people would understand they would believe. So we go back to Matthew. So the 69 weeks are done. The Messiah has been cut off. He's made an end of sin. He's made an everlasting righteousness. But just before that, we have the disciples ask two questions. Matthew 24, 3, they ask two questions. What shall these signs be? What shall be the sign of the coming and the end of the world? So they wanted to know. They said, look at this beautiful temple. Jesus says, every, every, there will not be one stone left unturned on that temple. And they're like, oh, when's that going to happen? When shall these signs be? We know that the temple was destroyed. It is documented history. Titus, Romans, Roman general, 70 AD, destroyed the temple. It's not rebuilt. So we know that Daniel, the temple was destroyed. It was promised it would be rebuilt. It was rebuilt. Jesus Christ then says it's going to be destroyed again. And we know it did get destroyed again in 70 AD. The next question is, what shall be the sign of thy coming? What is the sign of thy coming? Remember, the church is removed. Rapture happens. And ultimately, we know Jesus will not allow his bride to go through the tribulation. He says he's coming back, and he is coming back. So we know that Jesus Christ is speaking ultimately to the nation Israel here. So let's look at Matthew 4 through 14. I'm sorry, Matthew 24, 4 through 14. And we know we talked about that last week. That is the beginning of sorrows. We're not going to read all of it, but I do want to read what I had wrote down. So we know it's talking about future earthquakes, future wars, rumors of wars, things like that. But he says, the, but the end is not yet. And these are the beginning of the sorrows. And we know the beginning of the sorrows has not happened yet. So we go here. Jesus Christ goes on to answer, what shall be the sign of thy coming in the end of the world? So we know the first warning Christ gives them is to the nation of Israel. Do not be deceived. He tells them that. Beware of false Christ. Verse 5, for many shall come in my name. And you know what? He warns them because, you know, Matthew and, and Daniel 9, 27, he knows the nation Israel is going to actually sign a covenant with the Antichrist. He's warning the nation Israel, beware. Beware. And we know halfway through the tribulation, the Antichrist will violate the treaty. We read that in, Matt, in Daniel 9, 27. The abomination of desolation will happen. The Antichrist will be worshipped and the beast system is rolled in. It is, everything is getting in place now for the beast system. Matthew 24 is talking about the 70th week of Daniel. It is the tribulation. Church is not going to go through the trip. Matter of fact, let's look at 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. Because the Feast of Trumpets, it is a fall feast. 
when we hear a trump, is the feast of trumpets, when we hear that trump, the voice of the Lord, is that then the start? The rapture happens, then do we ultimately that feast of the trumpets brings in the 70th week of Daniel? I believe it probably is. One event, two different scenarios. Rapture happens, tribulation starts for the lost. But we read here, but I would not have you be ignorant. He doesn't want us to be ignorant on the subject of the rapture. Brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that have died before us, that you sorrow not, even as other which have no hope. They have no hope. They have not trusted in Jesus Christ. Because we know hope, scripturally, is trusting in the Messiah. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again. There you go, the gospel. Even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. People always say, I want to see the rapture. Well, you know what? You will be part of the rapture. If you died, Pastor Dan died before the rapture happened. He always wanted to see it. But he will be on that end coming and will be on this end if it happens, if we get to see it. But we will be part of the rapture. Even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain under the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, the voice of an archangel, with the trump of God, caught up, harpazo, snatch up, raptured, together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Comfort, because we will not go through this. God has a clear timeline. We have so many people, you can go on the internet, so many people are prophesying apocalyptic times. It is the end of times. Look at Irma. Look what happened in Texas. Look at the fires. Look what's happening. And I say, you know what? We can, we're moving towards that, but it is not apocalyptic times yet. Rapture hasn't happened. Rapture happens. It will be apocalyptic times. It will be seven years of the worst imaginable times here on earth. And I say, instead of looking for the signs of the apocalypse, we know this has to happen. And I didn't give this verse to Ron, but you know, he could type it in, and it is Titus 2.13. Instead of looking at for the signs of the apocalypse, let's look for our blessed hope. Because it says, looking for the blessed hope, the glorious appearing of the great God, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ is coming again. Not to set his feet here on earth, because that happens at the second heaven, but he comes to pull the bride, us, out before the 70th week. That's what we should be looking for. Looking for the blessed hope. Now we go to 15 to 20. Interesting words here. Middle of Daniel's 70th week. Verse 15 says, When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet. We read that. Stand in the holy place. Hoso readeth. Let him understand. Now we read this last week, 15 through 20. But halfway through the tribulation, the Antichrist, he'll violate the treaty. The abomination of desolation will happen. The Antichrist will be worshipped. It is the beast system. We read that in Daniel 9, 24 through 27. As Daniel reflected back and witnessed firsthand how God delivered on his promise, and after seven years, the nation Israel was released from captivity under the Babylonian Empire, you can be assured 70 weeks of Daniel will be completed as the 70 years of Israel under Babylonian captivity. It is all in Daniel 9. The assurance that the 70 years of Israel was delivered is the guaranteed assurance the 70th week of Daniel will happen. This is the Antichrist. Trib, where he said setting up the beast system. And ultimately, we know that Satan is setting up an all-out attack on the nation Israel. He's gathering all those people into one place. Get all the Jews into one country, into one area. It's part of the plan. We know the nation Israel signed a contract with the Antichrist. Antichrist violates it halfway through. Now I'm going to throw out some numbers for you. We know it's... 
84 months. Seven years. 84 months. You split that in half, you got 42. 42 months. You got 1,260 days. You got 1,260 days. This second half of the tribulation is called the Great Tribulation. Now we know the Bible has Revelation starting in chapter 4 because we know that John, he was actually raptured up to heaven, picture of the church because we know the church is mentioned in chapter 2 and 3, not mentioned after chapter 4. The seals, chapter 4, 5, and 6 talks about the seals, goes into the trumpets, goes into the bowls, and we know those are judgments that are coming on this earth. But I want you to read, when we read in Revelations, you're going to hear... 42 months. You're going to hear 1,260 days. And you're going to hear the second half of the tribulation and things like that. And you will see for yourself it is talking about the nation Israel and not the church for this time. A lot of churches believe a post-trib and even post-millennial reign rapture. All false. False. And a lot of times those churches don't even have the doctrine of the gospel. I haven't found one yet that actually has the gospel clear. Rapture has to happen first. Let's read Revelations chapter 12, 1 through 17. Interesting stuff here. We know none of this will happen until we're gone. Are things moving in place? Absolutely. And here we need we get a little history in Revelations to understand what's coming future. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she being with child cried traveling in birth and pain and delivered. And there appeared under wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads, ten horns, seven crowns under his head, and his tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, to devour her child as soon as it was born. As she brought forth a man-child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, her child was caught up into heaven and his throne. The woman fled into the wilderness, and there she hath place prepared to God, and they should feed her there. 1,203 score days, three and a half years. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. The dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. The great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God, the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and you shall dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast under the earth, he persecuted the woman, which brought forth the man-child. And the woman were given two wings of great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness unto her place, where she nourished for time, times, and a half. Time, times and a half, three and a half years, a time one year, times two years and a half, three and a half years from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out his mouth waters, flood after the woman, and he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. The dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. Man, you got some people that really mess this stuff up. You know what? To understand history, we got to understand the future, we got to look at the history. And we get there's some stuff that has happened in there and has not happened in there. He's mixing it up.
But you know what? The woman clothed with the sun. Instantly, people think it's Mary. Matter of fact, if you walk to Essential Health, if you go to Duluth down Essential Health, you come through the Skyway there, they got a statue right to your right of Mary, a picture of these exact symbols. Exact symbols. Her feet upon her head, ultimately a moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. It is not speaking of Mary. That is inaccurate. These symbols are a picture of the nation Israel because we know we have scripture proving it. Look at Genesis chapter 37, 9 and 10. Not, not Mary. The Messiah come out of her, the nation Israel. And he dreamed yet another dream. This is Joseph. And he told his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the 11 stars. And he's the 12th. Made obedience to me. And he told it is to his father and to his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall and I, shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee, to the earth? Who is Jacob? His name was Israel. What did he have? He had 12 sons. Who are the sons? They're the 12 tribes of Israel. One of his sons was named Judah. A lion will come out of the tribe of Judah. We are speaking of the nation Israel in Revelation chapter 12. He's been attacking the lineage of Israel because he wanted to destroy the line of Christ. Satan continues to attack the nation of Israel because he absolutely hates the Messiah. He hates Christ. Look at Revelation 12, 17 again. And the dragon was wroth with the woman. He hates Israel. Look at the persecution the nation of Israel has gone through, through the Holocaust, killing 8 million Jews are hated around the world. You have anti-Semitism around the world. Where does Semitism come from? It comes from Shem. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Shem, you're anti-Shem, anti-Semitic. You are anti-Christ. He hates them. He tried to destroy the line because you know what? From day one in the Garden of Eden, God promised that the Messiah would come and destroy, that he would kick him in the head. But he tells, the, he tells Satan, you will bruise his heel. And from day one, he's been on that. He hates Christ. It is Satan is that is our enemy. He says, and he was wroth with the woman, doesn't like the nation, and he went to make war with the remnant of her seed, we know which is speaking of Christ, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. Verse 11 talks about overcoming. How do we overcome? We can overcome by the blood of the Lamb. Overcometh is an interesting word, and I love how the scriptures always back it up. Look at 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 and 5. It says, And whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, our faith. Who is that overcometh the world but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? When you read the words overcome, we overcome by faith in Jesus Christ. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb. But we read here the second half of the tribulation is the great tribulation. It is when, so we know that Satan is attacking, he's attacking the nation Israel. We read there in chapter 12. 1,260 days, three score days, they're going to be, he's going to attack them. He's brought them all in one area. He's going to violate the contract. He's going to say, you know what, you're going to worship me, and I believe he wants to kill all the Jews, all the nation Israel at that time. We read how they're persecuted. Ultimately, how a eagles, they get on eagles' wings there, and they go to the wilderness. Satan's and we read about in Ezekiel 38, we know Russia's going to attack Israel. Syria hates Israel. We know a 200 million man march will come out of the east there, Asia, and attack Israel. Coming, th We are moving towards that. Are we there yet? No. Rapture hasn't happened. Rapture's got to happen first. But let's turn over to Revelation chapter 13. The second half of the tribulation is the great tribulation. It is when the world worships Satan. It is the abomination of desecration. It happens halfway through. Look at Revelation 13. And I stood up in the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise out of the sea, having seven heads, ten horns upon his horns, ten crowns upon his heads, the names of blasphemy, desire to be worshipped. 
the worst of the world system. The beast, the Antichrist, which I saw was like unto a leopard. His feet were like the feet of a bear. We know this is the same, almost the same dream that Daniel had here over in Daniel there. And ultimately a nation, it is the, this Gentile nation. This world system. And his mouth as the mouth of a lion. Dragon gave him power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. And his deadly wound was healed. He's going to fake a resurrection. And his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast, worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things. This man is going to be charismatic. He's going to have answers to everything. And ultimately great things and blasphemies and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. So does he fake his death, burial, and resurrection? Because you know what? Satan is a copycat. Does that, does a, we know people are looking for the Messiah constantly. They, will, they rejected the first one. They reject him all the time. Yet they will follow you know, these false posers. And so we know, does this man fake his death, burial, and resurrection? Around this time, probably. People worship him for 40 months. And he opened his mouth and blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. He's going to hate believers and overcome them. And power was given over the hundred kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. Listen up, people that are going through the trip. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity, but the, he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. You know what? The sword, interesting. You know, government's trying to control guns, take guns, control weapons, but you know what? They cannot control the machetes and the swords of the world. Most of the Muslims today, how do they do their beheadings? How do they do their killings? It is with swords. It'll be a barbaric time. And I beheld another beast coming out of the earth. Had two horns. And he had, he was like a lamb and he spoke as a dragon. So here we have this false prophet. We have the Antichrist and now we have this false prophet. He looks like the Messiah. He looks like the lamb. He looks like a sheep. He's got a sheep, but he's a wolf within his character is a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him. He causes the earth and them which dwell there and to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. He's going to be a witness under the beast and say, you yeah, worship him. Look at he's the Messiah. Then he doth great wonders and then he maketh fire. Just like we know that he, uh, Elijah called fire down. He's going to be able to call fire down from heaven. In the sight of men, and deceive them that dwell on earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, and that they should make an image of the beast which had the wound of the sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should be both speak and cause them as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he caused the all, both small and great, rich and poor, free bond to receive a mark in their right hand and their forehead, and that no man might buy or sell except that he had the mark or name of the beast and number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath an understanding count the number of the beast. It is number of man, number of six, three score, six hundred, three score, and six. We know that happens halfway through. It supports Daniel 9.27. Supports was have reading in Matthew there. So we go back to Matthew 24. We lead off where we left off last week, 21 through 28. The great tribulation, it is the latter half. For then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved for the elect's sake, for those days shall be shortened. Then, if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. 
for there shall arise false Christ, false prophets, show, shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before, wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he's in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lighteth, lightning cometh out of the east and shineth unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will be eagles be gathered together. So it is the most horrifying, most imaginable hardships, wars, famines, genocides, starvations, heat, no fresh water. When God pours out his wrath on Christ, rejecting the world, when God pours out his wrath on a Christ-rejecting world, it will be like never before. And he had to put a timeline on it because it says, ultimately, except those days should be shortened. He had to put a timeline on it. 70th week of Daniel, seven years. He had to put a timeline on it because, ultimately, there would be no creation left. All humanity would be destroyed. That's how bad it's going to be. Nothing we have seen or heard will come close to what will happen during the Great Tribulation. Church is gone. Church is raptured. People will get saved during the trip, but we also read in Revelation 19, the righteous, the elect, they will be beheaded. They will be reached out. If you don't worship the beast, you're going to get killed. It will be a horrible time. Believers that says, you know, there'll be, you know, ultimately people will be deceived. People say there'll be the Messiah here in the desert, Messiah there. Be not de de be deceived because he's talking to the disciples. When will you be coming again? He says, you'll know when I come. As everyone can see lightning, everyone will witness Jesus Christ coming at his second advent. Make no mistake. You will know it is him. 29 to 31. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be dark and moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. Then shall appear the sight, the sign of the Son of Man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. They shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. He's not blowing the trumpet. He's not speaking. It's the angels blowing the trumpet. I believe it's the trumpet of war, Armageddon. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from the end of the heaven to the others. We read of the cosmic changes here preceding Christ's return. Let me tell you, it will not be an eclipse for two minutes. And only a 1% of a population or a percentage of a 1% of a population in the world is affected by it. When the Lord has a cosmic change, everybody will know it is a divine, not an eclipse. Let me give you an example. And I believe it's in Ezekiel. Ezekiel, or I'm sorry, Exodus. Exodus chapter 10, 22 through 23. One of the signs for the Israelites to be delivered out of Exodus. Interesting sign. And Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. Not an eclipse. It was black. You can see your fingertips. They saw not one another. Yet in the land of Goshen, where the Israelites lived, neither rose any from his place for three days, but all the children of Israel had light. In the land of Egypt, there was complete darkness. Yet in Goshen, where the Israelites lived over there, they had light. Not an eclipse. Complete darkness for three days. Luke 23, 44 says, And it was about the sixth hour. And there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth. From noon to three. It was an eclipse. It was black all over the earth. So this is not an eclipse. It's not divine power. It is, you know, this is a divine power and glory having complete power over the cosmos. It's not the same trumpet as I mentioned in 1 Thessalonians 4. That's his voice. Revelation 4.1 says ultimately it was the voice of Jesus. And we read there in 4.16, the first Thessalonians, uh, the voice of Christ. But here we see after this, I look and behold, the door was open in heaven. The first voice which I heard was a word of trumpet talking with me. First trumpet. Feast of trumpets. Called up. Starts tribulation. Angels now blow a trumpet. 
It is a time for war. So the voice of Jesus Christ calls us home. We'll not let his bride go through the tribulation. So again, instead of looking at the signs of the times and saying, oh, that eclipse is the end of times or this or that, I go back to Titus 2.13. Rapture has not happened yet. Rapture happens, then you know the beginning of sorrows is started. That is the 70th week. That is apocalyptic times. Are we moving towards that? Yes. But it is not the start. It is not the start of the end. And we know the earth doesn't end because we get a new heaven, new earth. And we know Christ will reign on this earth for 1,000 years. But let's, we'll wrap up here in a few minutes. I want to cover a few things here. Look at Matthew 24, 32, 35. It says, now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and put forth leaves, you know that summer is near. He's, he's giving you these signs. We see, you know, when, when trees start to bud, you know it's springtime. Trees don't bud in the fall. They don't dry in the, they bud in the spring. So likewise, ye, when you shall see all these things, know that it is near, near. The second coming of Christ. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass. So as sure as leaves happen on tree, so will these signs be. After the tribulation, Jesus will return. There will be a war. The battle of Armageddon. After the seal judgments, the four seals, we know the seals, we look the apocalypse of the four horsemen, the pale horse, the white horse, or well, the white horse horse, then you know the red, black, and pale. After the trumpet judgments, after the bowl judgments, after the battle of Armageddon, second reign comes back down. Second advent, battle of Armageddon speaks. We know there in the valley of Megiddo, I think it is, where blood will be, horses bridle high set up his millennial reign. Let's read about the second coming of Christ. Turn to Revelations 19. Like I said, we'll wrap up here in a few minutes. Revelations 19. Because if you, this is now, Revelations is easy to understand. 1, 2, and 3, talking about the church. Chapter 4, John raptured up. Told of the, of the, of the seal judgments, the bowl judgments, the trumpet judgments. You get to 19, we're at the end of the tribulation. So we know 4 through 17 and 4 through 18, we're talking about this time in here. Then 19, what happens in 19 verse 11? The second coming of Christ. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness that he doth judge and make war. His eyes were a flame of fire and on, on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no man knew but he himself and he was clothed with the vesture dipped in blood and his name is called the word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword that with he, with it he should smite the nations. It is the end of the Gentile nations, a prophecy fulfilled in Daniel chapter 2. We see God take a rock that is carved out of a mountain, not made of hands, and he smites that statue, and that statue comes out, and that is what we're reading about right here. And out of the mouth goeth the sharp sword, and with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and treadeth the winepress. And we know what winepress does. It squeezes the grapes and pulls the juice out, and that's what he's going to do to man here on earth. With fierceness and wrath of Almighty God, and he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings, Lord of lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying, To all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather yourself together unto the supper of the great God, that you may eat the flesh of kings, flesh of captains, flesh of mighty men, 
flesh of horses and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him. The beast, that's why they mourned. When he comes across the sky and everybody knows it's the Messiah, it reread that, that they mourn. They hate him. They hate him. They've gathered there to destroy Christ because the devil, Satan, has deceived them where they are in a battle there. And I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to, to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army to be deceived that the world would think that they could destroy God. And the beast was taken with him and the false prophet that were wrought miracles before him with which he deceived them. We read that in Revelations there, 13 that he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image. They both, both, these both were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. Jesus speaks, it's done. You two go to the lake of fire, done. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse. Remember his word is a sword. Ultimately we read there, out of his mouth go to a sharp sword. He speaks, done. There's no battle. All the fowls are filled with their flesh. We read there about the Jewish nation not passing. We know that many of the Hittites, a lot of these nations have been destroyed. The nation Israel will not fade away. They will remain as a nation. If Jesus said it, you can guarantee it will happen. Thought we were going to get through it all, but we're not. And uh, we'll finish it up. Maybe we'll finish it next week. Interesting stuff, though. Let's keep look, our eyes on the Messiah. Let's look for the blessed hope. We know that has to happen first. The beginning of sours has not happened. And thank God we don't have to go through the tribulation. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Father, again, we're just so thankful for Christ. knowing that we have eternal life. And Father, we know that a third of the angels have fallen, and Satan, and ultimately we know that the Bible talks about, they use, they use words like a serpent and dragon. And we see these images of Satan today, of red head and horned feet or hoofed feet. Ultimately, we know those are mythical, mythical creatures called pan and ultimately, that's what Satan wants. He wants people to think that's the, what he looks like. Because then he can come and present himself as an angel of light. And the Bible is very clear. It is 2 Corinthians 11, 13 through 15. Satan presents himself as an angel of light. Man will think he's the most glorious thing. Beautiful, handsome, wise. Have all the answers and they will worship him. Remember, he presents himself as an angel of light. I believe the words serpent and dragon are a picture of his character. Just like he presents himself as a lamb, but he's a dragon. He is a wolf in sheep's clothing. And Father, we know that we're just so thankful that, you know, we, there's this, that we have Christ, that we know we have eternal life, that we can never lose it, that we know we'll, your bride, us, we will never go through the tribulation. And Father, if there's anybody out there that has not received Christ, why not? Why not believe that Christ died on the cross for them and resurrected for them? Why not? It is the greatest gift that you will ever receive. It's free. Where can you go and get anything free in this world today? Nothing except salvation. And we know that the 70th week will be a trying time, but we, the church, will not go through it. It will be for the nation Israel. And at that time, they will finally recognize and receive Christ as their Savior at the end of the 70th week. And then we will rule with him for 1,000 years on earth. As a believer, our life has just begun. The things that we have to look forward to are amazing. What's going to happen is amazing. So, Father, instead of looking for those apocalyptic signs of an eclipse or a hurricane, 
Let's look for that blessed hope, that rapture, because at any day, I believe Christ could be coming. It might be today, it might be 50 years from now, but it is going to happen before the 70th week of Daniel. So Father, we just thank everybody for coming out today. Bless them. Bring us all back next week where we can continue to give glory to you. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, open up your songbook to page 314.